Hey guys, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and thank you for the continuous support suggestions. Um, today we're going to discuss the Jamaican livestock cattle small ruminant genetic landscape as it's an important topic as we move further into developing our animals and important developing a breeding program for our country. And animal genetic makeup is important as in animals were bred with specific traits, for example, cattle that were bred specific for dairy purposes or small ruminants like goats who are bred specific to produce milk. We have a lot of registered breed across the world, recognized ones like the boar and the Nubian, but we also have countries that have their own registered breeds and a very similar model I think the Jamaican landscape will have to take up. Let's begin by talking about breeding and genetics while first going to Genesis in the Bible. We can talk about Jacob and the band story. Jacob wanted Leban's daughter hand in marriage and was challenged to work for him for seven years before he could. He ended up spending 14 years and got two of Leban's daughters, but however again was challenged to retain and only produce speckled color sheep. Leban thought he was being smart and removed all the solid coated sheep from his herd, thinking that the solid coated sheep were more dominant, meaning that they were more commonly found around and the speckled sheep would be a little bit harder to get. However, Jacob could say he was great at genetics and studied his sire selection and was able to maintain his herd. We could say T.P. Leckie, who is the father of Jamaican ketogenics, played this role where he developed a composite breed of Jamaica Hope using the Jersey, the Holstein and the Swally breed. And he developed this cow for the small farmer. He wanted a small animal that could produce a certain amount of liters of milk using low quality forages and this could have been an economically sustainable enterprise for small producers. This achievement led to the development of the Jamaica Red Pole, the Jamaica Braham and the Jamaica Black which was built solely on a lot of farmers dedicated and the government dedicated to improving the Jamaican breeding genetics and the cattle sector, both for the dairy and for the beef industry. We should also give kudos to the Research and Development Division and the Ministry of Agriculture who is the driver and who is mandated to maintain these genetic lines. This is supported by the government, this is supported by the Cattle Breeders Society for their appraisal and registration system and also the commercial producers who are committed in maintaining these cattle breeds. For example, Serge Island, Minard, Windalco, Bodo's Research Station. Also a strong support of medium to large scale farmers. The main aim of this program is to select animals of superior genetics through an appraisal system and registering animals into this breed as in a certain numbers is required to have a registered breed. This is a big problem for the Jamaica Hope and the Jamaica Black Breed which population numbers and number of animals registered has this breed a little bit in trouble. However, a success story we can talk about is Starboy from the Bodo's Research Station who under the embryo transfer program that was being done and the CFC project, we actually had Mr. Hondi McKenzie who was in charge of the program decided to save this breed using the embryo transfer process. Um, he linked up with Dr. Motto and on this program they decided to flush um, animals of superior genetics in the Jamaica black line and use semen from Starboy that superior stud that you see there and they did embryo searching and breeding and we found a grade 1 embryo. This grade 1 embryo was then implanted inside a Jamaica Hope dam who gave birth to Starboy Jr. Starboy Jr. was exceptional at birth um, by his body weight, his weight gains and eventually became the supreme junior champion at the Denver show in 2016. So this is actual proof of how is it that we can use embryo transfer to actually clone this superior genetics. Rest in peace Starboy. So what to give also thanks to the cattle breeders out there who continue on this appraisal system and develop like the Jamaica Braham and the Jamaica Red Pole whose genetic lines are a bit okay. So a deeper look into how this model is maintained is because of a nucleus herd system that we have been following in Jamaica, both for cattle and both for goats, where the Bodo's Research Station and the Research Development Division has committed and other partners to save these breeds by having a nucleus herd. They could either be opened or closed and they would maintain this line and allow farmers access to these genetics as backup. 
This is being done through time when Hyper itself has developed an AI and ET program for cattle. And now we have entered one year into our artificial insemination program for our small ruminants where we offer boar, Nubian cement, and sanding cement at an affordable price for our farmers. For our part two, we'll now take a deeper look into the genetic landscape and how is it that these systems work. We'll talk to lead personnel in the field who would help to guide us as the small ruminant sector plans to develop its own registry system and a genetic breeding program as we move forward. I plan to detail how is it that our ET program at Hyper will also change the landscape of the small ruminant sector. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.